Welcome back to our special primary coverage. The issue of school safety is a hot topic in Broward County, where voters are deciding if taxpayers should pony up. Let's look at the results right now. Here are the voters uh, who and what they decided. 64% to 36% deciding overwhelmingly for better pay as well as school safety with that new referendum. And the Parkland shooting massacre has no doubt pushed Broward schools right into the spotlight. And in particular, funding for school safety. So will Superintendent Robert Runsey get a boost in his budget? Local 10 News reporter Terrell Fournay live now from the Broward County School Board where the Broward Teachers Union held an election night watch party tonight and they had to be pretty happy with the results. Terrell. Well, things are actually winding down here at the headquarters for the uh, Broward Teachers Union tonight, but the folks who did gather here inside of this building, they left on a high note because that crucial referendum was given the green light by voters. Let's take you inside of the building where an enthusiastic crowd of teachers and other members of the union, they held a watch party as the results came in. They were monitoring all of the races, but especially the school board seats and the question about that half mill property tax increase. Since it passed, $93 million a year, <clears throat> excuse me, will go towards the Broward School District. The biggest chunk will go towards teacher pay raises. That will help in recruiting new teachers and, of course, keeping the uh, qualified teachers that are already in place, according to the Broward Teachers Union. Now, the union argues that teachers in Broward County are vastly underpaid. The rest of that money will go towards, uh, you know, hiring more school resource officers and also mental health professionals in schools. The, the salary was a piece that was, you know, kind of pushing back on the competitiveness, but as in, you know, greatness of Broward County Public Schools and, you know, conditions and, and how we're, you know, taken care of and we love our students and we want to be here, that piece was there. Now the salary was just going to lock it in. And that word from the president of the Broward Teachers Union, who was very uh, excited about this. She was watching this one very closely. Now, this extra money is annually, so only for the next four years. So down the road, voters would have to approve another referendum. Also, there has been no comment tonight from uh, Broward School Superintendent uh, Robert Runcie. He was not a, in attendance here, so we're still waiting to get his reaction uh, when that comes in. That is the latest here live in Tamarack, I'm Terrell Fournay, Local 10 News. Terrell, thank you. Two Parkland parents ran for school aboard. Lori Al Hadef, whose daughter Alyssa was killed in the massacre in Parkland, wins District 4 here and winning it pretty easily 65% to 18% for her opponent. And these political newcomers were vying to replace Abby Friedman, who chose not to seek re-election. Ella Def is a former physical education teacher in New Jersey. She's made it a point to hold Superintendent Robert Runcie accountable for the Parkland massacre where she lost her daughter. And she plans to focus extremely on school safety. And Local 10 News reporter Ian Margot spoke with her tonight, and he joins us live now with much more from Tamarack. Ian. Yeah, this race really wasn't even very close. Lori Aldef ended up winning with a large majority, a large percentage of those votes, and she's really looking forward to using this new position to make a lot of changes here in the district. Take a look at this video. We were at her watch party in Parkland earlier this evening. It was very calm there, but overall mood definitely very positive as well. She ran on a campaign about safety, of course, but also spoke a lot about transparency and taking ownership for issues in the district and then moving forward to make changes and make fixes to those issues. And she says she thinks her daughter Alyssa would be really proud of her victory. In order for me to make change and make sure it happens, I need to have a seat at the table and have a vote. And, and I'm so excited to have one, to be the next school board member, to be able to make sure what happened to my daughter doesn't happen to any other children and that we make our schools safe in order for our children to receive a quality education. And she also spoke to us about Superintendent Robert Runcie. She says that her new position will give her an inside look to see if he is still fit to be leading the district. She says if he is not, she will be pushing to have a vote to replace him. We are live in Tamarack, Ian Margul, Local 10 News. Okay, thanks a lot, Ian. And in District 8, Stoneman Douglas parent Ryan Petty, father of 14-year-old Elena, was hoping to make a difference. His opponents included a 19-year-old Elijah Manley, but he did lose to incumbent Donna Korn 50% to 31%. Local 10 News reporter Janice Fernandez is live now from Petty's camp with reaction there. Janice. Well, Calvin and Lori, Ryan Petty and his supporters were really hoping that this would be a runoff election, but it looks like incumbent Donna Korn is keeping her District 8 seat. 
and really by the slimmest of margins as well. But we got a chance to speak with Petty tonight, and he says he's proud of the campaign that he's run. And Lori and Calvin, when you think about a school board race, it's hard to imagine one becoming political and even heated, but that is exactly what happened in this District 8 seat. We know that Ryan Petty, he is the father of Elena Petty, who died during the Stoneman Douglas massacre. And school safety, of course, was his priority, his number one priority. It was really big on his platform. And earlier this month, uh, Donna Corn made some comments during a school board meeting saying that this was an amazing year for Broward County schools. And that was something that Petty took issue with, as well as some other Parkland parents as well. Petty, of course, had his own controversy when it came to some tweets that he posted back in 2008 that were a bit uh, contentious and also a, a bit uh, racist in some ways, but he has since apologized for those tweets. So bottom line, this was a heated race, but it looks like that Corn is going to hold on to her seat. Petty telling us that the fight is not over, though. 100% worth it because we've made school safety and security a topic that the board has to deal with at this point. So the, the voters of Broward County want uh, school safety to be at the top of the priority list for the school district. So uh, we've, we've forced them to deal with this topic. They haven't done it the past eight years. They did nothing for four years. Now they're going to have to address it. And Petty also telling us that he's happy for his friend Lori Alhadef, who will be on the school board now. The two of them sort of were in this together, so he's happy to see that she has a seat. And, of course, Petty really stressing to us that even though he did not win this District 8 seat, that he will keep fighting, he will keep holding the school board accountable. That's the very latest reporting live in Tamarack. Janice Fernandez, Local 10 News. And kudos to all of these parents for having the strength to run. Janice, thank you. Right, the school board races tonight in Broward County, District 1 here, Ann Murray and Jim Silvernell in a very tight race here, but it appears that Ann Murray, this was a very nasty race, by the way, Ann Murray, 36% over Jim Silvernell. At this point, 98% of the precincts reporting, 36% to Jim's 33%. And in Broward County as well here as District 7, Nora Rupert, a clear winner here. And Lori Levinson, let me take that back for District Number 6. Lori Levinson over Richard Mendelson, 56% uh, to his 44%. And then we go to District 7. Let's bring you that now. Nora Rupert taking that, as you say, Calvin, 59% to Mike Obel's 31%.